Hallo und herzlich willkommen liebe Assassin's Creed Freunde, mein Name ist Sirius und jetzt gibt es ein paar exklusive Fragen an den Lead Content Manager von Ubisoft Montreal und somit einem der Hauptverantwortlichen für das neue Assassin's Creed 4. Das auf Englisch geführte Interview wurde bei einem Presseevent von Ubisoft in der vorherigen Woche in Düsseldorf aufgenommen. Hierbei gibt es interessante Einblicke hinter die Kulissen von Assassin's Creed 4, Fragen, die bisher so vielleicht noch nicht beantwortet wurden und in der nächsten Woche oder in den nächsten Tagen werde ich euch auch nochmal eine komplette Zusammenfassung davon in Deutsch präsentieren. Ich wünsche euch jetzt erstmal viel Spaß beim Interview. Yes, the, the, well, the story um, in Assassin's Creed 3, as you're probably aware, uh, the Ed Desmond story concluded. So I don't want to necessarily spoil people who maybe haven't finished Assassin's Creed 3, but uh, suffice to say that the Desmond story concluded nicely in Assassin's Creed 3. Not so nicely for him, perhaps, but um, certainly we have an opportunity now as the real world and the Assassin's Creed world uh, sync up because in if you remember that all of the events of the previous Assassin's Creed games happened and came to a head in December 2012. So now the Assassin's Creed universe and the real universe are now in real time. And that's what we want to reflect in the present day in Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. So it will actually be you, the player, uh, taking part in the present day portion of the game. So, uh, the you, the player, will be an employee at Abstergo Entertainment. Abstergo Entertainment is a subsidiary of Abstergo Industries, uh, the public face of the Templar organization. So, as a researcher at Abstergo Entertainment, you will be, one of your, your main primary search, uh, research subjects will be Edward Kenway, a pirate uh, in the early 18th century. Absolutely, uh, Abstergo Entertainment, the technology is now at a point where anybody, as long as they have the DNA of the subject matter, in this case Edward, anybody now can access uh, the memories of Edward Kenway. So the story, the present day story of Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag is a continuation of the world and the lore that we have created in all the previous Assassin's Creed games. It's not something that we're just throwing out what's happened before, it's a continuation, it's the same universe. So, will you meet the same characters again? I don't want to reveal that today, but if it's the same world, maybe you can make your own mind up. Yeah, um, you know, what we always say on Assassin's Creed, that history is our playground. We define our, our own rules. There's no s set rules that we have to follow. We've gone nearer to the present day in the previous games, but there's nothing to stop us going back. And in fact, it makes a lot of sense in this, in this case. Uh, what happens in the future, I don't know, but there's no reason why we should always move towards the present day. We can go anywhere in time that we like. Um, I don't want to get too much into the into the technical side, but suffice to say that we will support all the uh, platforms that will be available at our launch in uh, fall this year, in autumn 2013. So that includes uh, PC, of course, uh, Xbox, PS3, and now the recently announced PS4. I am not the person to answer that question. <laughs> The biggest connection between um, Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag and previous Assassin's Creed games is the family lineage of the hero Edward Kenway. So he is the father of Haytham Kenway, who you start uh, the experience in Assassin's Creed 3 with. Obviously Haytham has a son with a Mohawk woman. Um, that uh, son is called Connor, who is the main hero of Assassin's Creed 3. So Connor is the grandson of the hero of this new game. Yeah, no, I've got, got a good answer, yeah. So, um, the first thing to, to bear in mind that is that Edward Kenway 
is a trained sailor. So he knows his way around a ship. Now if you think about what life is like on a ship, there's all sorts of climbing and uh, agility required to hoist the sails, to climb through the rigging. So Edward is naturally an agile uh, climber and an athlete. So when he then transfers those skills into the city, cities like Havana in uh, Cuba or uh, Kingston in Jamaica, those skills are just as apt there as they are on the ship. So it, it's a totally makes sense that this guy is able to climb, use some parkour skills, uh, both in the city and in new environments that we have like the jungle. So what we want to do absolutely is create a cohesive experience. This is not a land game and a sea game bolted together with long loading sequences between the two or anything like that. What we are creating is something that's cohesive, fluid, fun and epic. So you can seamlessly go from land to your ship, land to sea, from ship to ship, all in many cases, in the vast majority of cases, without any loading whatsoever. You can take your ship up, you see an island on the horizon, oh I haven't been there before, you take your ship up, you just jump off into the water, swim up and you can explore the island. What might be there, Mayan temple ruins, uh, where you can uh, use your uh, parkour climbing skills to explore, that could be one example. You could pull up at um, at a major city for example and, and navigate around there as well. So cohesive and fluid and seamless are three words I would use to describe our world. Definitely it's not a land game and a sea game, it's one full Caribbean experience. We absolutely want to keep uh, the number of loading screens and cutscenes, unless they're important to the story, don't get me wrong, we're going to have some fantastic cutscenes which will mean a lot to the user uh, and to the player um, in terms of delivering a very rich narrative. So we're not going to ignore that. No, we'll have cutscenes when they, to, to bring this amazing, fantastic story to life. But in terms of loading and something that stops uh, flow and causes friction between traveling between uh, different um, environments, we want to keep that to an absolute minimum and that's a real focus of the team.